Uh, this is a supplement. This is a fifth video in the series, but I recorded it fourth, but we'll call it the fifth one anyway. Um, this is about what you finally do when it is time to read Unadapted Ancient Greek. Here are some of the tools you may find yourself using. Uh, this, in, this in front of the camera right now, instead of my smiling face. Uh, in front of the camera right now is Little and Scott's Intermediate Greek English Lexicon. This is called the Middle Little for those of you who are looking for a cute name for it. There is a bigger one called the Great Scott, and then there is a small one called the Little Little. Um, I think for most learners' purposes, the Middle Little is probably going to do the trick. It's a Greek-English dictionary, Greek here, definitions, some examples of use, not very many. He'll explain how some specific authors use specific words. He may give you information about, well, they. They may give you specific information about what dialect this word is apt to show up in. Um, this is really the gold standard, and you're not going to find too many copies of this used, because if you see it used, that means someone has died. This is the sort of book that goes into your library and never comes out. Um, you should be able to pick up the middle little for about $50 or so. It's, it's probably the one you would want to use just for ordinary, casual use. For serious use, you want to step up to the Great Scott. Um, got this when Borders went out of business. Lucky me. Oh my goodness, it's a translation. This is from the Oxford World's Classics. This is the Plato Symposium. And there's nothing much to say other than get familiar with the content of what's in the unadapted Greek. Uh, this is for students who are just beginning. Find out what it is you're learning how to read. Get excited about it. Get yourself some real motivation here. Um, Oxford World's Classics, Penguin Classics, there's all sorts of inexpensive translations of all of the major authors. Find who you like, read it, and if you like them in English, you'll like them even better in Ancient Greek. Um, I don't know what else to say other than that. However, one final tool. This is my copy of Herodotus's Histories, Book 1. Um, published by Jeffrey Stedman. He is the author of the notes and commentary and also the publisher. He's done these on demand so then that way they're never out of print and they're never out of stock and it's it's just great. I'm I'm so thrilled that Stedman is doing this because what he's doing is he's taking the approach that you should read ancient Greek as opposed to reading a bunch of grammar manuals, you should read Ancient Greek. What he's done is he's reproduced a public domain copy of the Oxford text, which is a critical text that is our best guess as to what the text actually was when Herodotus wrote it. Down here is the apparatus, which, well, if you're an intermediate reader like I am, there's no need to fuss with that. Um, so here's the unadapted Greek, and over here... Stedman gives us all of the vocabulary words that occur fewer than 15 times. He gives us the words, so here we have um, epos, epeos, um, to, a word. It happens 11 times in book one of the histories. And then here he gives us notes, and I would say some of the notes are a little more remedial than they need to be, but that's fine because it allows people with less skill in ancient Greek to actually have the pleasure of reading the Greek itself. And I I can't say enough of that, because so many, so many ancient Greek texts are kind of, well, either you know ancient Greek or you don't, and if you don't, you're not in the club. And how do you get in the club? Well, you read a bunch of ancient Greek. Well, how did you get to do that? Well, I don't remember. I just read ancient Greek now. And in the back, he has the full vocabulary for the ones that happen more than 15 times. So we have like, um, thala, thalasa, he, si, happens 22 times. So you're, this book is really quite self-contained. And it's published, it's printed on demand, so you don't need to wait around for 
the publishing company to get up on this. You can you can just buy a copy directly from Amazon.com and Stedman gets a little bit of money and you get the book and it's all very very exciting and good. Um, and you don't have to wait around for someone to decide, well, it's worth our time to print a couple thousand copies of this. Now, Stebbins going to make it available so that you can get it one copy at a time. He's done other books. Um, my understanding is he's working on Herodotus' Histories, Book 7. Um, he's done Plato's Symposium. He's done some of the Iliad and the Odyssey. He's really doing a phenomenal favor to anyone who wants to read ancient Greek and is not at a really advanced level. I can't say enough about what he's doing.